Welcome, my friends, to Come Follow Me Family. Today's lesson, we're going to focus on Luke 3, 7 through 14, the joy of repentance. Let's dive in. What brings you joy? What makes you the most happy in your life? Go ahead, take the next 30 seconds, uh, list as many as you can, write them down or think of them. Go ahead and, and, and think about all the things that bring you joy. All right, so what did you come up with? Did you come up with, is it your family, your friends, a special someone, uh, maybe a pet? Uh, is it a principle, a truth, a book, a movie, something you enjoy doing, a hobby? Did anyone list repentance as something that brings you joy? I know I didn't. If you didn't think of repentance as something that brings you joy, what feelings or emotions come when you think of repentance? Why might someone not always immediately feel joy while repenting? President Russell M. Nelson said, quote, When we choose to repent, we choose to change. We allow the Savior to transform us into the best version of ourselves. We choose to grow spiritually and receive joy, the joy of redemption in him. That is so exciting uh, to think about, that, that we can change. You know, I don't know if you guys ever look back at photos of when you were a kid and are just completely blown away by how much you've changed over the years. I've done it. I look back at photos of me as a kid and I cannot believe how far I've come. And I'm still so far to go. But through the atonement of Jesus Christ and through his gospel, we can change. We are transformed. And repentance is part of that, guys. And we can find joy. He wants us to be happy. Adam fell that men might be, and men are that they might have joy. 2 Nephi 2.25 So, that's the purpose of repentance, is to find joy. John the Baptist came to prepare the way for Jesus Christ, as we covered yesterday, and he invited them to repent. In fact, in Matthew 3, 1 through 2, it says, quote, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Fun fact, the first recorded words that Jesus Christ said in the New Testament were also repent. So we have a common theme here. Yesterday, we learned what Mark and Matthew said about John the Baptist. And today, we're going to study what Luke had to say about them. Go ahead. I want you to pause the video now and read for yourselves. Again, this video can't replace your own study of the scripture. So go ahead and read for yourselves Luke uh, chapter 3, verse 10 through 14. And as you're reading, ponder and look for the answers to how did John help the people repent? What changes did John invite the people to make? And how might these changes have helped the people turn from sin and be prepared to accept and follow Jesus Christ? Go ahead and pause the video. I'll leave this on the screen in case you want to read it off the screen. Welcome back. Let's discuss what we just read. So I've highlighted a few things myself. I love how it starts off in verse 10. And the people asked him saying, what shall we do then? There's a saying, I don't know where it came from. The saying goes, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. If you think about it, I think it was Alma 32, where it talks about the parable of the seed in the Book of Mormon. Uh, the people were humbled to receive the word from Alma and Amulek. And they were humbled, which prepared them. And you can see in this verse, the people are asking, what shall we do then to John the Baptist? So they are prepared uh, their hearts are broken, they're open. And so John the Baptist answers. He says, He answereth and saith unto him, He that hath two coats, let him part to him that hath none. And he that hath meat, let him do likewise. So share of your abundance. And then he says, Then came also publicans to be baptized, and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? So publicans, what are publicans? Well, publicans in ancient Rome were tax collectors for the Roman government. So for the oppressors. Uh, of the Jews, in their opinion. Uh, they were hated by the Jews. They viewed them as traitors to their own na nation because the publicans often charged more money for taxes than was necessary. 
So it's kind of like they were serving the enemy. And Matthew, I believe Matthew was a publican before before he became an apostle. So these people were hated by the Jews. And so publicans came to him and said, what shall we do? And John the Baptist said, exact no more than that which is appointed you. So only collect fair taxes. So how did John help the people repent? Well, you can see that he encouraged them to serve and to do justly and fairly with their fellow men. How did this prepare them to accept and follow Jesus Christ? I'm interested in your answers to that, so please comment below. In order to receive the higher law, we often have to first be obeying the lower law. And so just like we have the Ten Commandments prepared the way uh, for the higher laws of Jesus Christ, they need to be at least being just and fair before they could listen and learn and be ready for higher laws, possibly. Let's listen to the prophet. Does everyone need to repent? The answer is yes. Too many people consider repentance as punishment, something to be avoided, except in the most serious circumstances. But this feeling of being penalized is engendered by Satan. He tries to block us from looking to Jesus Christ, who stands with open arms, hoping and willing to heal, forgive, cleanse, strengthen, purify, and sanctify us. What powerful words from the prophet about repentance. Let's review. So does everyone need to repent? The answer is, of course, yes. Everyone has to repent. None of us are perfect, guys. No matter how good we look on Facebook or social media, we are all flawed and all in need of repentance. Who wants us to see repentance as punishment? Why? Well, we know that's the adversary. That's Satan or Lucifer. And why does he want us to see repentance as punishment? It says in 2 Nephi 2.27, quote, For he seeketh that all men might be miserable like unto himself. So, Satan doesn't want us to repent because he wants us to stay miserable. It's if we feel with that we're worthless, then that can lead into what's been called the sin spiral. So if you feel terrible about yourself, you're like, what's the point in even trying to be good because I suck so bad. And so you start committing more and more sin and hiding in the darkness because you're miserable. To make repentance seem so onerous and so difficult to go, that we shouldn't do it because it's too hard. And the word for repentance in the Greek New Testament is metanoeo. The prefix meta means change. The suffix noeo is related to Greek words that mean mind, knowledge, spirit, and breath. Thus, when Jesus asked you and me to repent, he is inviting us to change our mind, our knowledge, our spirit, even the way we breathe. He's asking us to change the way we love, think, serve, spend our time, treat our wives, teach our children, and even care for our bodies. Nothing is more liberating more ennobling or more crucial to our individual progression than is a regular daily focus on repentance. Repentance is not an event. It's a process. It is the key to happiness and peace of mind. When coupled with faith, repentance opens our access to the power of the atonement of Jesus Christ. What is Jesus inviting us to change? And the answer is, there's quite a few things that he lists out um, in that verse. Inviting us to change our mind, our knowledge, our spirit, even the way we breathe. He's asking us to change the way we love, think, serve, spend our time, treat our wives, our children, and even care for our bodies. Wow. So he's inviting us to change everything about ourselves. It's a transformation. Repentance is transformative that change us into new and better beings. How often should we repent? Well, he said we should repent daily. Daily repentance, daily alignment with Christ. 
Then he asks the question, you know, well, here's the question for you. What is more liberating, more ennobling, or more crucial to our individual progression than is a regular daily focus on repentance, end quote. And the answer is nothing. He says nothing is more liberating, ennobling, or crucial. Repentance is core to progress back home to our Heavenly Father. Is repentance an event or a process? It's a process. It's not something we do once and we're done. It's something we have to continue working at. When coupled with blank, repentance opens our access to the power of the atonement of Jesus Christ. He said that when coupled with faith, Repentance opens our access. So repentance alone, if we don't believe that Jesus will forgive us and that through the atonement we can be forgiven, then repentance won't work. We need both faith and repentance. And that may sound familiar if uh, you remember from your primary days, I think we all memorize the articles of faith. And this is the fourth article of faith. We believe that the first principles and ordinances of the gospel are first, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Second, repentance. Third, baptism by immersion for the remission of sins. And fourth, laying on of hands for the gift of the Holy Ghost. And it's so amazing. In just the last two days, we've covered these already. So we just talked about faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, which is a prerequisite for everything else. And then repentance is our focus today. What John the Baptist did to prepare the way for Jesus Christ and that what we have to do to prepare our hearts for Jesus Christ. And then baptism by immersion, that's what John the Baptist did. And then the laying on of hands of the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is what Jesus Christ did through the power of the Melchizedek priesthood. All right. So what stands out to you from President Nelson's teaching about repentance in Jesus Christ? You can pause the video and discuss if you want to. What stands out to you over what we just discussed? When have you witnessed the blessings of repentance in yourself and others? Why do you think the Savior is so hopeful that we will repent and is so willing to forgive us? You know, think about those things. Uh, moving forward to your independent study section. So in this independent study, I'm going to invite you to pause this video and take the next several minutes and choose a st and study a sp specific aspect of repentance below. How do I repent? How can I find more joy in repentance? How can I overcome the fear of repentance? And what might a regularly daily focus on repentance involve? Or what might it look like in my life? So choose your topic. Down in the description below the video, you'll see I have additional references and links to help you get started. But you want to use the Gospel Library. You can use the Bible Dictionary, the Topical Guide. You can use Google. You can search. But I encourage you to study these topics and understand those better. All right, it's your turn. So what did you learn from our study today? What advice would you give to someone struggling to understand why they need to repent? Maybe that person could be yourself or your friends. What would you want to, them to know and understand about Jesus Christ, about how much he loves them and how, how understanding he is? What has helped you to develop or strengthen your testimony of the joy of repentance through Jesus Christ? Oh boy, great questions to ponder. You know, if, if it was me, if I, if I was the, answering this question, what would you want them to know and understand about Jesus Christ? I would just say that you just, you don't really, you have no understanding or appreciation of how much he loves you. He loves you so much more than anyone else can possibly comprehend. He, he died for you. Not only did he die for you, he lived for you. And he understands you. We know that he descended below all things when he suffered in the Garden of Gethsemane and, and blood, from, blood from every poor. Jesus Christ understands you. He's been looking over you all your life. And he loves you. And he wants you to come to him. And he wants to come to you and, 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 and love on you and bless your life. I'm going to end with his quote today from Sister W. Kimball, The Miracle of Forgiveness. It is not repentance, per se, that saves man. It is the blood of Jesus Christ that saves us. It is not by our sincere and honest change of behavior alone that we are saved. 
but by grace that we are saved after all we can do. 2 Nephi 25, 23. True repentance, however, is the condition required so that God's forgiveness can come into our lives. True repentance makes a brilliant day out of the darkest night. So today's challenge, I encourage you to ponder, how can repentance help us draw closer to Christ? How should repentance bring us joy instead of sorrow? How would knowing this, or if people in your life knew about repentance and that they could change and be forgiven, what would that mean to them? And then repent. It works and we all need it every day. Uh, Guys, I need to repent. We can all do better. And it should be, as the prophet said, a daily practice. Take the time to study one of those four topics we just covered. If you haven't yet, go ahead and take the time to do that. You can rewind the video and look in the description below. And that is Luke 3, 7 through 14. I hope you enjoyed it. I really do. And I just, I hope you apply the principle of repentance in your life. And I promise you, it's, he has changed my life and he can change yours. Love you. Take care.